Greetings and welcome to Apostolic Lighthouse Church. I'm Pastor Donnie Huslidge, and this is Thursday morning, September 10th. It amazes me how fast things go, especially when you do a video every morning. It's kind of just, it's a shocker to, to see the time. I mean, I, I put it together on the little video, and it, as I put it in, I'm like, this is crazy. We have moved so fast. Well, we are in a time of the lowest number of COVID cases that we've had probably in nearly six months. It's pretty incredible. A very low death rate uh, uh, for the last six months. There's been 135, I believe, right in that number of deaths in Williamson County. And that is the official Williamson County number. You know, we can look at all the numbers and I know they're confusing because there's so many different people reporting, but I've been sticking with the same one since the very beginning. I haven't veered from that. So uh, amazing, amazing. So I'm, I'm hoping that relatively soon the governor will make a some sort of directional announcement, but I know it's different in different parts of the, of the state. So I'm just not going to try to qualify everybody by my circumstances. I'm just going to say for myself personally, I'm delighted about that. How, how does that sound? I'm delighted about it. The fewer cases of COVID, the better. Uh, and holding our breath until the time of a vaccine. I don't think the vaccine is a fix-all. Uh, I just don't see it as being that. So, uh, And neither is the flu vaccine. The flu vaccine is not a fix-all. That didn't fix everything. So if you have an expectation in that direction, it's probably wrongly spent. So, uh, but it's exciting times that there's under a hundred cases, under a hundred cases out of our 650,000 population in Williamson County, less than a hundred cases. That is just thrilling. That is thrilling. Now, an interesting thing is we waited for the temperatures to get hot because we thought it would run COVID off. Well, today we have our first really cold day or cold day for Texas and literally, hopefully that's the case. And uh, and as we pursue forward, uh, whether we have COVID or not, we still have faith in Jesus Christ. We still have our confidence in God. And this has been a tremendous trial of our faith. It, it is for those that have found themselves weak in God during this time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the time to be weak in God. It's a it's a it's a testimony. If you have more time. If you found yourself weak in God and God has given us this reprieve of time, it is time for us to pursue forward and to go deeper into that place where God would, would renew our, our faith and our confidence in him. Which brings me to where I'm at today, which is uh, we want to talk about the seven reasons for Christ, why he suffered and died on the cross. And we need a renewal of this every once in a while. We need to re be reminded about sanctification and justification and the things that Jesus did on the cross. So let me jump into this. I want to I share this with you. And this is an adaption from the book, The Passion of Christ. And I didn't read the book, but I took excerpts from it. Um, and I haven't yet uh, to this day ever seen the movie. But uh, I've, been, I've been told that it was incredibly well put together, but very, very uh, somewhat uh, brutal or or. or, or Kind of, yeah, brutal. Um, and that's exactly what the death of Christ was, was about. But the biggest thing about the death of Christ is his resurrection. So number one is this. Um, Jesus suffered and died to achieve our own res his own resurrection from the dead. Well, what do you mean by that? The wrath of God was satisfied with the suffering and death of Jesus. The holy curse against sin was fully absorbed. Jesus went into this, and you could see this through the scripture, with the thought in mind that he was going to go through this horrific event and come out at the end. And you can see that as, you know, my will be done, but thy will be done in the Garden of Gethsemane, and, and the, and the uh, sweat as drops of blood. I mean, all of these factors are components that said he was here for a reason. Even when he told his mother at the age of 12, I'm going to be about my father's business, there was, there was a complicated end that was coming. The price of forgiveness was totally paid by that, that situation, by, by his death, burial, and resurrection. The righteousness of God was completely vindicated. All that was left to accomplish was the public declaration of God's approval 
of, of the activities, the life, the death, the suffering of Jesus Christ. And how did God put his check mark on the whole subject? He rose Jesus from the dead. Oh, that is so amazing that the way God said, this is done, it's been done right, everything is sealed, everything is accomplished, I, this is the greatest, it was way more than a black guy to the devil. This was, the chains were minted, they were forged, the, they, and they're unbreakable. This, this was a predetermined thing. I'm about to unleash my spirit on all humanity and many, 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 many millions of people will come flocking to Jesus Christ. That was all concluded by one factor. The raising of Jesus Christ from the dead. God putting his check plus on the whole event was the resurrection. Ha, that's powerful. That's number one. It's to achieve his own resurrection. Number two is this, to show his own love for us. The suffering and death of Christ was to do with my, had to do with me personally. It is my sin that cuts me off from God. Not sin in general, but my sin. I am lost and perishing. Certainly, the sin of humanity is involved there and, and puts me in a position of, of uh, separation from God. But it is truly that repentance of my sin. I don't necessarily repent for Eve's sin. You know, I'm sorry that it happened and it is, it is brought, brought a curse upon this world. But I repent of my sin, what I did against Christ. If I was there, would I have been cheering on his death? Absolutely. I know myself. I know my heart. I know the way. I mean, I would be uh, been pulled into the crowd. I would have been. I would have been one of those that said, crucify him. Because it, it seemed to be the fervor of the day. Look at all these people on the streets with in Portland and Antifa and that kind of uh, stuff. And then even if it was flipped over, I know the, the, that's the liberal bastion, but um, I don't think that the conservative bastion has been perfect either. We have this tendency to have a mob mentality. And would I have been involved in the mod? No, uh, um, I, I'm not so egotistical and prideful that I can't take a moment and see my own carnal humanity. It was my sin that put him on the cross. Certainly. I am lost and perishing. All I can do is plead for mercy. Then I see Christ suffering and dying, and I embrace the beauty and bounty of Christ as my treasure. And there flows into my heart the great reality, the love of Christ for me, that the, to show his own love for us. He was willing to die because he wanted us free from sin. That's why he was willing to die. He wanted us free from sin. He loved us so much, he wanted us free from sin. Number three is in order to cancel the legal demand of the law against us. Now, this gets technical. There is no salvation by balancing the record. Listen to these words. It's very profound. There's only salvation by canceling records, not by balancing it, because then the sin still exists. It's on the other balancing scale. And that was the problem with the Old Testament. The balancing was not a complete work. The complete work had to be the abolishment and the, the wiping away of the record. The record of our bad deeds, including the defective good deeds, Remember, our, our good deeds are defective because we're found in sin. Along with the just penalty that each deserves must be blotted out, not balanced. This is what Christ suffered and died to accomplish. So many people who come to the altar want to balance things with God. They want to make a deal with God. It can't work that way. It has to be everything or nothing. I mean, he is not a partway God. I mean, he can't fix you without everything. And that's why it really is amazing, amazing what he did on the cross. Why we need Jesus. And the next one is, number four, is to prove the basis for our justification. That it was worth it. No, whoa, that's scary. Are you worth it? Boy, that smacks you one. Wow. Have I been worth it? Oh, I pray I've been worth it, Lord. Hmm. 
to provide the basis for our justification and to complete the obedience that becomes our righteousness. What do you mean? Oh, our obedience. So I'm not trying to justify myself. I'm not trying to be totally worth it in the sense of uh, be of great value. But if I obey, his holy sacrifice makes it worth it if I obey. So he's not looking for my sacrifice. He's looking for my obedience. Exactly what Samuel said to Saul. God is less interested in sacrifice than he is in obedience. Mm. So if I get up this morning, I repent of my sin, and I determine to live for God, is that obedience? Yes, it is. If I just slide into the word of God, and I spend that time in prayer talking to the Lord, is that obedience? Yes, it is. If I get up and just put on my clothes perfect and I act perfect, do, is that? No, no, that that's a bit of sacrifice. Now, that's an offshoot of obedience is that I do a lot of things that I just want to make sure is pleasing to him, but I don't think I earned my salvation. My salvation was given to me freely. Woo! Hallelujah. In the courtroom of God, we have not kept the law. Therefore, justification in ordinary term is hopeless. Yet amazingly, because of Christ, the Bible says God justified the ungodly who who trust in his grace. Christ fulfilled all the righteousness perfectly, and then that righteousness was reckoned to be mine when I trusted in him and when I experienced his salvation. Christ's death became the basis for our pardon and our protection. That's why I can run unto the Lord every day. Number five, to obtain for us all things that are good for us. He will give all things that have good for us, all things that are really... See, what the deal is, is what is God's intent? God's intent through the resurrection is to obtain that which was good for us. It's almost... uh, I mean, many people have said it's a restoration of the rules that were in the garden. It's not a complete one for one and not a complete picture of that, but it is a restoration of that which is good for us. That is why Jesus came, because he wanted good for us. Number six, to bring us to God, the evidence we have been changed is that we want the things that bring us to the enjoyment of God. He wants to not only bring what's good for us, but he wants to bring us into his embrace. You know? Uh, I, 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 I have lots of illustrations for this, but it's that hugging, loving embrace. Like I have grandkids who we'll wrap my arms around them. I have my children. I wrap my arms around them. They're a whole lot bigger, but I wrap my arms around them. And I feel that, that loving embrace really and truly the resurrection was so that God could do good for us. But also number six is that he could bring us into his embrace. Hmm. We're surrounded, covered through and through with a forgiveness that brings us into his presence. And number seven, the last one, is to give us eternal life. All that is good, all that will bring true and lasting happiness will be preserved and purified and intensified. We will be changed so that we are capable of dimensions of happiness that were inconceivable to us in this life. For this Christ suffered and died, why would we not embrace him as our absolute treasure? My goodness. Once again, I want to just go over these. The reason for the resurrection, the reason for suffering. To achieve his own resurrection from the dead? Absolutely. That check plus to show that that what he did was perfect. And then to show us his love for us, and I hope that convinces us, in order to cancel the legal demands of the law against us, not a balance, but a wiping out, to provide the basis for our justification, the reasoning, the, the legal document, all of the reasons why he has replaced our sins and we are justified. And then the next one, to obtain for us all things that are good. He wanted us to experience good. Number six is to be drawn into his intimate embrace, and then the last one, which is to give us eternal life so that we might be with him forever. I cannot conceive of a greater gift than that. There is no greater gift. We need to be reminded every once in a while why 
he died for us. And in the midst of all of our joy and love, see now we know things better than we've ever have. Because if you've got the Holy Ghost, you have insight into things that nobody has. You get to experience that. Sometimes we get used to it and take it for granted. Let's never take the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for granted. It was because of his passion for us. Passion for us. That's why it's called the passion of Christ. His love for us. I'm undeserving, but oh, I am thankful. I am so thankful. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, be with those under the sound of my voice and those that aren't, Lord. Though we live in Babylon, Lord God, give us grace to be victorious and to be pleasing in your sight, Lord. We ask you in all of this, Lord, that you wrap your arms around our families, your, our loved ones, O oh God, and we're thankful for eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.